Welcome to the Collaboration Whiteboard Project. We've just released two new lessons for our free course, Enterprise 20 Dial Plan Build, Dial Plan for Call Forwarding and Voicemail, and Dial Plan for Mobility. Subscribers to our website can also download configuration spreadsheets and playbooks for the Enterprise 20 Dial Plan Build, and BAT files to reproduce the ABA lab environment, allowing you to run the playbooks yourself. Our dial plan for call forwarding and voicemail lesson looks at call forwarding, including AAR, CIFR, and voicemail integration. Call forwarding increases the chances that a call will complete by forwarding calls that would otherwise fail to different numbers. It's easier to collaborate when you can reach the people you need to collaborate with. Do we let users configure some or all of their destinations themselves? What destinations can be configured for the different conditions? And what calling search spaces should we apply? What will our end user training look like? What will we tell our users? When designing your plan for call forwarding, your first consideration is whether users configure some or all of their destinations themselves. Your second consideration is what destinations can be configured for the different conditions. We looked at two scenarios, a simple option where users configure call forward all and we configure all other destinations as go to voicemail, and a more complicated scenario with additional requirements for user configuration and destinations. Our simple option is easy for us to manage but it just doesn't meet our requirements. The CUCM is a collaboration product. The whole point is to facilitate collaboration within the enterprise and with customers and partners. We can facilitate collaboration by maximizing the chance of calls being successful. Placing excessive restrictions on a confusing call forwarding scheme is not going to help. If our users can make themselves more reachable with a flexible self-service call forwarding scheme, then we can pat ourselves on the back. Do you care about ROI on your collaboration investment? Enterprise 20 has these requirements. Whatever we do, it had better be easy to explain to our users. We'll never allow call forwarding to E911. Some users expect to configure forward all, forward busy, and forward no answer destinations themselves. We will allow call forwarding to local numbers in all cases. We will allow call forwarding to long distance numbers if the user has to log in to configure the destination. Remember that our long distance class of service blocks high risk area codes. And we need to configure lines differently for different kinds of users. Some executives want no restrictions on any calling or forwarding, and that's just what we'll give them. That's what we implemented. We made things easy for users to understand. See our drawing dial plan and user training. And we made it easy for phone administrators to manage. See how we did it at our website. Our dial plan for mobility drawing looks at a dial plan for mobile users with multiple devices. We deploy extension mobility, device mobility, and mobile connect. How do things work when users roam? How do you want it to work? It's your choice, to some extent, but remember, you need to explain how things work to users, and configuring and managing the solution has to be practical. And remember this, the North American numbering plan is ancient. It was developed in the 1940s. For perspective, Around the same time in 1946, the first general purpose electronic computer was developed, the U.S. Army's Ballistic Research Laboratory's ENIAC. In 1981, legend has it that Bill Gates said, 640K ought to be enough for anybody. The NANP was in its fourth decade at that time, and that was 33 years ago. We can only do so much with such old technology. 
We explored mobility for user Chloe Campbells. Chloe works in the Montreal office and has an extension mobility profile she uses with her work phone in Montreal and for roaming. CIPC for roaming and a remote destination profile for single number reach or mobile connect. What happens when Chloe roams to the Halifax site using extension mobility or roams with CIPC and device mobility? The CIPC and EM profiles look the same. Should they behave the same? Do we want Chloe's devices to behave like devices at the Halifax site where she has roamed? or like devices at her home Montreal site. We thought this would be the easiest to explain to users. All phones at a site work the same way whether they roamed there or not. This was our objective for mobility. It's easy for users to understand. If you roam to a site, then all dialing internal and external from call lists and call forwarding as well works just like it does at that site. It turns out that this cannot be implemented with CUCM version 9.1.2. Another option that would be easy to explain, your phone always works the same way, no matter where it is. But this would make dialing local 7 and 10 digit numbers at roaming sites confusing. And we don't want 911 to work like at the Montreal site when we roam to Halifax. If users need a table to look up dialing behavior, then we've failed. It's an epic failure. This has to be as simple as possible. After much investigation, this is what we implemented. Review the lesson to understand the table. We revised the objectives for our dial plan for mobility. Users can be mobile. If users roam to a site, then all dialing, internal and external, from speed dials and call lists works just like it does at that site. Call forwarding always works like at the home site. That's what we implemented. We made things easy for users to understand. See our drawing, dial plan, and user training. We made it easy for phone administrators to manage. See how we did it at our website. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.